Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning we've come into your presence again. And this is our last Sabbath service before the ending of this year. And the message that you've given me, Lord, we know here on this earth, all we have to offer you is ourselves. We can do nothing without you helping us, Lord. And this morning, as we look into your word, we wonder, Lord, how many people really wants to do what you have to say. These words are your words and not mine. These are thus saith the Lord. And all the people that's wanting to get into your heaven, Lord, how many of them wants to do what you have to say? Lord, we ask you to bless this word you've given me to preach this morning. And Lord, we just ask that to go out with power in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. And so this morning, as we look at this last um, day of our calendar year, not of God's calendar year, is it mandatory that we keep the Sabbath? What is God? Why did, why did God even set up such a thing? Does it even matter what day the Sabbath is? And besides, who even does that kind of stuff today? And does God even care? And so we can only look at what the Word of God has to say. We, we try to make up our mind about things in this life. And you look back and forth and things keep changing. Like when I was a child in junior high school, or high, uh, in grade school really, I guess you could say. They was telling us in the fourth and fifth grade, if I remember correctly, that the world was like a hundred and... 200 million years old and said that one person had a theory that it might be 500 million years old. When I got up into uh, senior high school, lo and behold, the earth had grown so old that it was over a billion years old. And now what are they saying? And so we keep coming up with different ideas and different plans, but are they God's plans? Are they God's ideas? What did God have to say about the Sabbath? And is it in the Bible? And is it for us today? Or is it something that we pretty much do it if we want to? And if we don't, oh well, do what do your own thing, you know. In Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8, the word of God says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. He blessed it and hallowed it. Not No other day in the week did the Lord bless like He did on the seventh day, nor did He ever hallow it like the Sabbath day. God's Word says to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Now this is what we call the fourth commandment. And then again in Deuteronomy chapter 5, you might say this is a rehearsal of the uh, Ten Commandments it was, that we just read there in Exodus. But in verse 12 of Deuteronomy chapter 5, he says, Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. And he pretty much says the same thing in this uh, scenario here in verses 12 through 16. Now, but one of the things that comes up here in uh, in verse six, uh, 15, I'm sorry, and remember that that was a 
servant in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God brought thee out through a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. And also in verse 14, he says, But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. And he said the same thing he said in Exodus, not to do anything, absolutely nothing on that day. And the word convocation, convocation, is different in character and different from what most churches are doing today. Most of the churches today are dealing with more like people matters, you know. But God called the Sabbath day a holy convocation. And so it's not about people. It's all about God. It's not about if you feel like doing it. It's about what God has to say. Do you want to do what God has to say? Or do you want to do what you want to do? And so God says to keep the Sabbath day as a holy convocation. And uh, one just needs to ask yourself, am I a child of God or am I just a Christian? There is a difference, you know. The whole world just about is Christendom. And the whole, even the devil claims to be a Christian. <laughs> Everybody says they're a Christian. But how many people can say they're a child of God in reality? So when you stop somebody and you actually corner them and they tell you you're a Christian, say, are you a child of God, though? There's a difference. And so... If you're a Christian, consider that word Christian. Does that word make you safe? Because to be a child of God, you have to be born again. So think about the terminology that you're using to express yourself. He says in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 2, Speak unto the children of Israel and say to them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. You see that word, what I was talking about, convocations? You shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. Six days shalt thou work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and a holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all of your dwellings. And so the Sabbath was made for man. And it was a day that God rested when He created everything that He created. And Jesus Himself claims to be the Lord of the Sabbath. And He made... Well, Jesus created the world. And so <laughs> He should be the Lord of the Sabbath since he made it. And so in Mark chapter 2, we read in verse 27, he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. In verse 28, therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And so does he say that we no longer have to do it? And if you did do it, did you do it begrudgingly or out of necessity or did you do it because you love the Lord? See, everyone has to make up their own mind what they're doing and why they're doing what they do. You know, I, we're in this world and who else do we have? they got telescopes and rocket ships and all kinds of stuff. There's nothing out there. This didn't. All there is is just us. There is nothing else. There's just us. Well, they talk about spacemen and aliens and all this, but in reality, there's just us. And if we can't get along together, how are we going to get along in heaven? Is God even going to let us into His heaven? Think about how you're living your life. If you're loving God, are you loving your brothers and sisters in the Lord? I'm not saying you're supposed to love the devil and love the devil's children, but Jesus says love your enemies. 
do good to them that hate you and despitefully use you and persecute you. And so, in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, it says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether to be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created by him and for him. And it's talking about Jesus. And Jesus created the world and He created the Sabbath and He proclaimed that He was Lord of the Sabbath. And so should we keep the Sabbath? Think about that. Should we honor the, what the Lord has to say or we, or did Jesus tell us not to do it? And we not no longer have to do that sort of thing. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1, Thus the heavens and the earth were created and finished and all the hosts of them. And verse 2, And on the seventh day God ended His work which He had made. And He rested on the seventh day from all His work which He had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it He had rested from all His work which God created and made. Now, God rested on the seventh day, the Sabbath. But ask yourself, did he rest because he was tired? <laughs> Does God get tired? Think about that. You may not get tired a lot of times when after working all week long. But yet God tells you to rest on the Sabbath, doesn't he? And when you get up into the age like I'm in right now, you're thankful that you can rest a day. <laughs> And sometimes more than one day during the week. In Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of His understanding. So the Bible says He never gets tired. And so why did He rest? If we never get tired, should we rest? The observance of the Sabbath was to be a sign of identification between God and His children from the very beginning. And so, it is special to God. And it should also be special to us. If it's not special to you, why? Why wouldn't it be special to you? Because this is when God created everything, including you. <laughs> the observance of the Sabbath was to be a sign of identification between God and His children. Days begin and end at Sunday, uh, uh, sunset, uh, according to God. We find in Genesis chapter 1, verse 5, verse 8, verse 13, verse 19, verse 23, and verse 31. In verse 5, I'll read one of the verses and you can see what I mean. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. So they, in order to have any kind of, uh, uh, of uh, way that we can think about a 24-hour day that we have, then there's 12 hours a day and 12 hours a of night. And so looking at from a perspective to our clocks on the wall, we have a 12 hour and a 12 hour clock. Sometimes people use what they call military time. They go from 12 from 0 to 24 hours. And so the night time comes in after the 12, like 1300 uh, would be the afternoon. Anyway, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And 1600 would be 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But nonetheless, God called us out of the darkness into the light. And He created the heavens and the earth, and He began the evening and the morning. So if we use 6 p.m. as the beginning of the Sabbath until 6 p.m. the following night, it's kind of an average between them all. Unless you're one who sits out there and watches when the sun goes down, the evening and the morning, 
but he didn't make a clear, concise hour and time limit. And so if we'll set 6 o'clock p.m. until 6 o'clock p.m. the following night, then we have pretty much what God was talking about. And we look at, um, in the Bible, he talks about having watches, and there were three-hour watches, and each one of the watches were broken down into in, uh, four of them in the day and four of them in the night, into three-hour watches. And so, on the ninth hour, Jesus was crucified. Well, what time, or third hour he was crucified, I'm sorry according to what the Word of God says, which would be 9 o'clock in the morning. And it says at the sixth hour there was darkness upon the face of the earth because the sun hid itself. And what time would that? This, this, the sixth hour it would be 12 o'clock. And so God was showing us, just like He did this year, there is no Santa Claus. And God showed us this year that there was not by having 62 degree weather here in West Virginia. There was no room for no sleigh and no Santa to ride on <laughs> in, this, in this kind of weather. And God was proving to us. And henceforth, in the very near future, He's going to prove to the whole world that He is God. And yet we're going to have to make a decision. We're going to have to do what He says to do during this time, or we can continue in our own way. God commands us to celebrate this holy time from evening until morning until evening along with Him. And so that's what holy convocation is. It means a time you set apart to have time with God. Just you and God. Well, you have your children with you and things that you're doing in your home, but you need to be centered upon the Lord on the Sabbath day. It's from sunset to sunset. And so, like I said, from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. In Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 32, It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at evening, from even to even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. So, from one evening to the next evening. It's not like the Julian calendar that we have today was based upon what Rome and Babylon had way back when, and they started their day in the middle of the night, at midnight, as when we, they changed from one day to the next. But according to the Word of God, it changes every evening, the evening and the morning. And so we have the start of the day at, I'd say, 6 p.m., and then the start of the new day at 6 p.m. again, 24 hours later. In Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 13, the Bible says, If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the Lord the God, the honorable, and shall honorable honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then, verse 14, thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon high places of the earth. And so God is going to give us a blessing, more so than what we would actually ever have if we keep His Sabbath, as He has commanded us. And it's supposed to be observed each week regardless of your pressing duties, uh, rush business, or even having to go out there and, and, and get the harvest of the crops in. In Exodus chapter 34 and verse 21, he says, Six days shalt thou do all thy work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In airing time and in harvest thou shalt rest earing time. Now earing in the old English word meaning plowing in earing time. So even in your plowing time you shall rest. And if you didn't know God commands us to prepare for the Sabbath day as well. In Exodus chapter 16 and verse 23 he said to them this is that which the Lord has said tomorrow is the rest 
of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which you shall bake today, and seize that which you shall seize. Seize means to boil. And that which remaineth over, lay up for to be kept until the morning. And they laid up until the morning, as Moses had begged, and it did not stink, neither was there any worms therein. And what they was talking about here was the manna that God had told them to collect. They could collect every day only enough to eat for one day. But on the day before the Sabbath, they could collect two days worth of the stuff. So they would have that to eat on the Sabbath day. And so when they went out into the field on the Sabbath, there wouldn't be none of the manna found but it would be there on every other day during the week. He says in verse 26, Six days shall you gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. And so God is not going to provide any manna out there on the Sabbath day. So this further states that what we should be doing for God or what we should not be doing. Well, now you have to make up your own mind. Are you going to do what the Bible says? Or are you going to listen to what some man has told you about we're not under the Sabbath or we're not keeping uh, stuff like we used to keep and doing stuff like we used to do. Now, here I have this, this uh, big nail here in my hand, right? And... Uh, a lot of these Christian organizations tell us today that we're no longer under the, under the law, but we're under grace. We no longer have to keep the law, but we're under grace. But which law are they talking about? Because I've dropped this nail twice, as you've seen, and so we're still under the law of gravity, aren't we? And if you look at me, I don't look nothing like well, not much like I used to look when I was a lot younger. So we're under God's law still yet. It is appointed once to die and then the judgment. So as we are born, we grow up, we get old, and then we die. So we're still under that law. So what law are we not under then? We're not under the law that says we have to go out and slit the throat of some poor animal to pay for our sin. He said, this is contrary to us. And he took it out of the way. And Jesus Christ died on the cross. And he shed his blood once and for all. So we don't have to go out and kill animals and sacrifice animals anymore. But in the very near future, Israel is going to build a temple. And they're going to blaspheme the word of God because Jesus Christ has died once. For all sin. And when they when they build that temple again, they're going to offer sacrifices, just like they did in the Old Testament, pointing toward Jesus' coming. That's what that was all about, pointing toward Jesus' coming. But they're going to offer sacrifices again, like Jesus didn't come. And this is going to be blasphemy to God. And God is going to send a mess against them people. And they're going to repent. And out of that repentance, Israel is going to be saved, as Paul's prayer was in Romans chapter 10. My greatest prayer is that Israel might be saved. But a lot of Israel is going to die before that time comes, before they accept what Jesus has done. Well, the Antichrist is going to sit down in that temple over there, and he's going to be the Antichrist because Christ would never sit in a temple while they're going to be offering sacrifices because he offered himself. So that ought to tell you right off that he's not the real Christ. He's an imposter. And this imposter is going to sit in that temple and he's going to proclaim to the world that he is God. In Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 2, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the Son of Man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. And so, God proclaims us to be blessed if we do what he says to do. Now, even if you don't, you're going to miss out on the blessing, but what else are you going to miss out on? <clears throat> Jesus intended the Sabbath to be 
a benefit to the people, not just way back when, but even for us today as well. In Exodus chapter 23, now there's a lot of verses, if you're keeping up with me today, in the Bible that talks about this. In Exodus chapter 23, in verse 12, Six days shalt thou do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest. That thine ox, thine ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. That's everybody gets the rest. You know, part of the people don't work, and if you have people working for you, they're not supposed to be working. The very word Sabbath means rest. And it allows us to think more about God in His holy convocation, if it's done correctly, to pray, to worship Him, look into your Bible, study it, read it, understand more about God's purposes for us, and keeping, and in us keeping His Sabbath, God says, so that we can see what we're doing. He can see if we're going to keep His commandments. You see that? He can see if we're going to keep His commandments or no. Now, if you're not keeping God's commandments here on this earth, is He going to give you a chance to break them when you get to heaven? Do you think you're, you're going to go up into His heaven and have eternal life and He's going to have to deal with all this mess like we have in the world today? Do you think that God, that God would do such a thing? Well, what would heaven be then? Would heaven be heaven if we have all the turmoil there as we have on this earth today? Because everybody interprets the Word of God. And the Bible says there's no interpretation. But all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So that the man of God can be holy. Poor woman. In Exodus chapter uh, 16 and verse 4, Then said the Lord to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. You see there? God's going to prove us. Are you going to walk in His law or not? And He's going to do things to prove you. Are you going to do what God says or are you going to do what you want to do? It's up to you. In Hebrews uh, chapter 10, beginning in verse 23, in the New Testament, the children of God are admonished to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together on the Sabbath. And Hebrews 10, 23, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised, not forsaking, in verse 25 now, the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. When you see the Sabbath coming, just be ready for it. Because you know that you, it's going to be your time with God. And the, just you and God. And He wants you to take the time out. Forget about all your work schedules and all the things that you're having to do. And take it easy. Rest your body and rest your mind in, in the Lord. In Luke chapter 4, we see through the Scriptures that Jesus also kept the Sabbath. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus kept the Sabbath. Verse 16, He came to Nazareth where He had been brought up. And as His custom was, He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Verse 31, And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And so he not only went to church on Saturday, but he preached everywhere he could preach on Saturday as well, on the Sabbath day. And so we see the Apostle Paul's manner. 
Did he keep the Sabbath? Everybody said, well, we're not under the law. And Paul, got, Paul told us this and Paul told us that. Well, did Paul keep the Sabbath? What does the Bible say about that? Acts chapter 17, verse 1. Now when they had passed through Amphilopolis and Apollyana, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, now listen to this, in Acts 17, verse 2, And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. So on three different Sabbaths, he went in and preached it, or expounded on the Scriptures, on the Sabbath. And we also see in the New Testament, the Church of God themselves kept the Sabbath. Acts chapter 13, verse 13. Now when Paul and his company loosed from Pamphylus, they came to Perga in Pamphylia, and John departed from them and returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and sat down. And after reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue said to them, You men and brethren, if you have any word or exploitation for the people, say on. All right, then verse 42. And when the Jews were going out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Not Sunday, but the next Sabbath. And verse 44, And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the Word of God. What would happen if they came Sunday? Wouldn't have been nobody there, would they? <laughs> or Friday. They came on the Sabbath, like the Lord said. And who was... Uh, and we see more of... Uh, in Acts chapter 18, uh, verse 4, And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Verse 11, And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. He was teaching and preaching on the Sabbath day every week. Every week that went by. Today there's a still a lot of Sabbath keeping churches in America. And there are different denominations. And I can tell you to name one town is right up here in um, Salem, West Virginia. They have a Church of God, uh, Seventh day. They have a Baptist church, Seventh day. Or both of them are Sabbath churches. That's just right here close to us. Uh, besides, you have the Seventh-day Adventists and, uh, uh, I don't know, a few others close by. But there are hundreds of different Sabbath-keeping churches today that know the blessings of keeping God's Sabbath and cannot keep that day. How do you, how do you expect to earn your way or how do you expect to get into heaven if you don't keep that day do you love God with all your heart how did you ever uh, how did you ever get to a point where you knew you loved God but yet you had no holy convocation with him you see when Jesus says I don't even know you in Matthew chapter 7, he talks about the people that says, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this and didn't we do that? And like they're trying to justify themselves to get into heaven. Jesus said, I don't even know you. And that word know is the same word that's used in Genesis chapter 2, Adam knew his wife. That means he had intercourse with his wife. But Jesus using that same word as intercourse, saying, I don't even know you. I never had intercourse. I never had a holy convocation with you. You see? There's a difference. 
And so people are, are losing out because they don't have a holy convocation with the Lord. They don't have... A, and you're not going to get one in a Sunday church. Period. Because God proclaimed the Sabbath as a day of rest. And if you're not going to do that, you're not going to have a... How are you going to know Jesus? How are you going to know the... And yeah, you may proclaim that you do. And you may voice it on high. And you may even do miracles in the name of Jesus. But is that going to get you into heaven? Because they said, Lord, Lord, didn't we do all these things in your name? Didn't we? Lord, I was a preacher. Lord, I was this. Lord, I was that. But Jesus simply told them, I don't even know you. We never had a holy convocation. We never had intercourse. And not sexual intercourse. I'm talking about a deep spiritual thing that you can have with God that you're missing out on because you have to have it your way. And so, salvation is a free gift. And there's nothing we can do to earn our entrance into the kingdom. But we're justified by faith, not by the works of the law. But does this mean because we're not justified by the works of the law, does that mean we're supposed to break the law and not keep the law? Well, if you say, well, I'm not, I'm not under the law, and you go out and kill someone, what's going to happen to you? Or you go down to Walmart and shoplift. What's going to happen to you? Or you go 75 miles an hour in a 35 mile speed zone. What's going to happen to you? But you say you're not under the law. Well, that's a different kind of law. Really? Think about what you just answered now. Really? It's a different kind of law, isn't it? God made the Sabbath and He clearly informs us what He wants us to do. In Romans chapter 2 and verse 13, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. You see, just hearing the Word of God and not doing it is not going to help you. It's not going to do anything for you. It's not even going to justify you. So to even further clarify this, to leave no doubt who is justified before God, we read Romans chapter 3 and verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. You see there? Through faith. I don't do what God says. Faith gives me the ability to do what God tells me to do. No, I'm not keeping the law because I'm not sacrificing some animal. Jesus paid the supreme sacrifice for that. And there's no need for me to have to do it again by myself. And I'm trusting in Jesus as my Savior. And as my Savior, He is the one that's going to save me. I can't save myself. And so when you don't realize what you're doing, you don't want to keep God's law. And not keeping God's law, how are you going to be justified in His sight? Because you're a lawbreaker. I go down the road driving, I set my speedometer or uh, cruise control on 55 miles an hour. And I'm cruising down the road and I have people passing me on a double yellow line around a turn, on a single yellow line around a turn, because I'm going entirely too slow and it's plainly marked, 55 miles per hour. And so what are they? They're lawbreakers, aren't they? And if there's a car coming, something's going to happen to them, isn't it? And they want to get me involved in that mess with them. Or they go up the road just like we was going up to um, uh, Cabela's the other day and going out of New Martinsville. A man passed me. Oh, I guess he must have be doing, I don't know, but just it had just turned 55 miles an hour 
and it was a double yellow line, and he passed me on that turn right there where the speed limit sign was. And I don't know how fast he was going, because he was out of sight in no time. We drove on up the road, and when we got up where them smelly plants was up there, there he was pulled over, the police lights flashing, and there the police standing beside his car. Go ahead, speed if you want to. Go ahead, don't keep the law if you don't, if you don't want to. Go ahead, break God's Sabbath if that's what you want to do. But bear in mind, you're going to have to pay the price for it one day. You are going to pay the price for your wrongdoing. Now, Sabbath-keeping churches know that keeping the Sabbath is a sign that God is love, and we are to worship Him because we know Him, and He knows us. And because of this, turn with me to Revelation chapter 22. God wants to prove us, doesn't He? Remember I read that verse a while ago where He may prove us. Is He going to check us out to see if we're going to do what He says to do? And so verse 20, uh, chapter 22, verse 14 of the book of Revelation. Blessed are they that do His commandments. Is keeping the Sabbath one of His commandments? That they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. What does that say to you? If you're not keeping His commandments, oh, but I'm not under the law. I don't have to do that. <laughs> What's this word say? What does the word of God have to say? Now, you're going to listen to what some man tells you, or you're going to listen to what the word of God tells you. Plain and simple. In John chapter 14, you know, Jesus sanctifies us. And He's the one that makes us holy. In John 14, 15, He says, If you love Me, keep My commandments. Verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever. Verse 21, He that hath My commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth Me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. And verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him, and make our abode with him. And verse 24, He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which has sent me. And so Jesus says, if you love me, you're going to keep His commandments. And it, He said, these are not just words on a page. They're wonderful words of blessings. And when we devote our full day to God, we do it because we love Him. Think about that. It's just like tithing. We had so many people come to this church, they wouldn't give the time of day. One time we had 37 people in here. We took up an offer and we got almost 87 cents. Yeah, out of 37 people. We quit taking up offerings a long time ago. And we don't ask people for money. The Word of God is plain about what He has to say about that. And you do what you feel like you need to do with God. And so, people get angry with me. Oh, you're preaching about money. I ain't preaching about money. I'm preaching about doing what God said to do. Even though we can't earn our way to heaven by keeping His commandments, we are still going to be judged by them. And many is not going to make it into heaven by not trying to keep His commandments. How are you going to get into heaven when God says you have to keep His commandments before you're eligible to go in through the gates of the city? 
In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12, he says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Think about that. God's going to judge you by the Word of God. And what are you going to do with it? Are you going to do what God says? Are you going to continue your own way? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Jesus also said in John 15 and verse 10, If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. We read where Jesus kept the Sabbath, didn't we? He kept every commandment that is in this Bible. Every one of them. And we can't do... How many of them have you kept? How many of them have you broken? Are you seriously thinking about getting into God's heaven and you haven't repented? Jesus obeyed the Father's commandments and He asked us to demonstrate our love for Him by doing the same thing as He has done. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 3, And hereby we do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. <laughs> he that saith, I know Him, and keepeth not His commandments is a liar, and the truth is not him in Him. But who, verse 5, whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. How is it that you know you're in him? Through a holy convocation, the Holy Spirit abiding within you, you know you're a child of God. And you know you're a child of God and you know you're different from the rest of the world because look at what the rest of the world is doing. Jesus plainly points out that a lot of people who are going to church will not be getting into heaven in Matthew chapter 7 as I spoke a moment ago. He says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in you and preached in your name? And have in your name we cast out devils or demons? And in your name we done all these wonderful works? And Jesus says in verse 23, Depart from me, you that work iniquity, because I don't even know you. I don't know you. We never had any time together. Oh, you had your time. And you kept raving on, but you never heard me talk to you. You never had a communion close with me. All you could think about was yourself. So you're going to have eternity with yourself. And then we see in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, he says, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Verse 27, But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. Verse 28, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite the Spirit of grace. Let me tell you something. These churches are full of people today who are calling themselves government Christians, <laughs> dispensational Christians. What are they calling themselves? Christian nationalists? And in their churches, they're wearing Trump hats. And they're saying that Trump is my Savior. This is nothing new. The devil's always had some sort of thing going. 
Look how many people go to church on Sunday over the last 2,000 years and have violated God's commandments. So what is some more to add to the fire? Some more flames to their fire. God says we're to call His holy day a delight. Isaiah 58 and verse 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath from doing my pleasure on my holy day and call thy Sabbath a delight. See? God says to call His Sabbath a delight. There are many Sabbath-keeping churches, as I said before, and many denominations that are keeping His commandments. Now, in the dark ages that have gone by, the Catholic Church brought this stuff in, and they changed the Sabbath. Well, they tried to change the Sabbath, but the Sabbath has always remained on Saturday, the seventh day of the week. But they tried to change the day of worship to Sunday. And if you're going to keep the Sabbath, they're not going to like you. Because they want you to do what the Pope said and not what God said. And so, some people today have been taught that we're not supposed to keep the things that were nailed to His cross. But the Sabbath was not one of the things that was nailed to His cross. Why, did he, why was He nailed to the cross? Because He was a sacrifice. What do you do with a sacrifice? You kill it. You murder a sacrifice. You kill it and shed its blood. That's what was nailed to His cross. And the devil has clouded the Pope's mind and he in turn has clouded the minds of billions of people throughout history. What was contrary to us was slitting the throat of some poor animal for our sin. Jesus died and was nailed to the cross for our sin. And if you were to continue to do that, that would be blasphemy against God, against the Holy Spirit, and against Jesus Himself. Now the Seventh-day Adventist Church understands some Bible prophecy, but they go by some woman. You know, some woman is what's leading their church. And we know the Bible talks about women preachers, and that's not supposed to be. And so, how can this be? Why are they doing this? And, and yet they're keeping the Sabbath. But are they keeping the Sabbath? Just because they go to church on Saturday doesn't mean they're keeping the Sabbath, does it? God put that word into the mouth of some woman when it's contrary to the word of God that your women be silenced in the churches contrary to the word of God how would they how would God appoint or anoint Helen White Helen G. White or Ellen G. White to be a prophetess over their church. How could this be? But one should never underestimate the power that the devil has to go against God and His commandments. We know there's no Santa Claus and there's no Easter Bunny. And yet we see Lots of the church is doing that. And yet they want to convince you to do what they're doing. But if they're doing it against God, and you do what they're doing, you're doing it against God then, aren't you? The church with the truth is not always popular. And what is popular is usually not always the truth. And the church with the least amount of people in will usually have more truth because the people don't want to hear the truth. They want their lies. They want their idols. 
They want to do their way, not God's way. Satan doesn't attack their church as he attacks the church that's doing God's word. And so their church, we see in the book of Revelation, their church is called by God in the book of Revelation, a great whore that sits upon many waters. Revelation chapter 17. Satan doesn't attack that church. The seventh day of the week is the Sabbath of our Lord. And we're commanded to rest from our labors and to worship God following the teachings and examples of Jesus, the apostles, and the New Testament church. The weekly Sabbath is a day of rest. It begins on Friday at 6 p.m. and ends on Saturday at 6 p.m. It is sanctified or set apart by God Himself. And like I said before, the customs of beginning and ending days at midnight goes all the way back to practices established by the pagan Roman society, which was contrary to the Word of God. And so breaking the Sabbath is also contrary to the Word of God, isn't it? God said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Then he says in verse 31, God saw everything that he had made, and it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God said everything he had made was very good. And he rested on the seventh day. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 2. In Mark chapter 2 and verse 27, Jesus is speaking. He said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. It's made for us to rest. Take time to be with God. You've got so many things that you're doing in this world. And your mind is so crowded by everything around you and everything that you're doing. But take one day out of the week and spend it with God. So he's the one that actually instituted the Sabbath. God the Father, having created all things through him, Jesus. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was with God in the beginning, verse 2. Verse 3, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Where does that leave you at this morning? Does it leave you with a feeling, well, I still don't understand all this. But Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 says, Jesus in verse 15 he says who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature for by him were all things created talking about Jesus that are in heaven in the earth visible invisible thrones dominions principalities powers all things are created by him and for him so a very special time for us to deepen and broaden our relationship with God and not just seeking our own way but saying, Lord, I'm going to take time. I'm going to take time to talk to you. I'm going to take time in my prayer life to pray with you and be with you. In Leviticus 23 and verse 3, Six days shalt thou work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is a Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. The Sabbath is supposed to be not only a reminder that God is our Creator, but of the fact that He is the one who frees us from bondage. And as children of God, 
we were we need to remember that we were freed from a spiritual bondage we were liberated through Jesus Christ we were under a heavy bond we had to control our own life we had to control our own destiny and then we had to live according to man's ever-changing laws when God's law never changes it remains the same in Exodus chapter 31 and God makes it plain the reason he wants to keep the Sabbath verse 13 Speak thou unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. You shall keep my keep the Sabbath, therefore it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among my people. How is it that all these Sunday going churches are going to get to heaven? I'm glad I'm not the judge. I'm glad that God didn't send me to judge. He sent me out here to this church to preach the word. Preach what he had to say. He said, open your mouth and I'll put the words in it. The Sabbath is a sign that God and His people have a special, perpetual covenant. It is to be kept as a reminder that we as the children of God, that He is our one true God. And He sets us apart. And as He sets us apart, the more that we surrender ourselves to Him, the more that He is able to use us and change us into His image. When Jesus returns to this earth and He establishes the rule of kingdom over all nations, the Sabbath will be regarded and observed by all humankind as a means of worshiping and serving Him. And we read in Isaiah chapter 66 that same thing. Verse 23. It shall come to pass from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Why would God get rid of the Sabbath? When the whole Bible is full of it. The whole Word of God is full of it. Now, who but a fool would try to tell you that we're not supposed to keep the Sabbath any longer? Who but a fool would tell you to come to church on another day other than the Sabbath? And yet, only those, and the Bible was plain, only those that keep His commandments will be getting into, the, into heaven. Revelation chapter 14. Verse 12, he says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Revelation 22, verse 14, Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. You have to do what God says. You cannot live your life living like you're living. Jesus Himself set a righteous example in His life by observing the Sabbath and the New Testament records His followers continued to practice long after His death and resurrection. There is no example in the Bible that can be found in the writings of the apostles or the practice of the New Testament church that shows any hint of changing from keeping the Sabbath. There is nothing in the Word of God that tells us to change it from the seventh day to the first day of the week. 
And today it calls for those who are the children of God to keep the seventh day holy. And it is our God who, who has delivered us from the bondage of sin. When we see John in the book of Revelation says what happened to him on one Sabbath day. Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, he says, I was in the Spirit when on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. But on the Lord's day. Now, would the Lord's day be Sunday? Or would the Lord's day be the Lord's day of rest? The one that He has set up from the very beginning. The one that He has called us to be holy, using and doing during the whole course of the Bible. John was in the Spirit on the Sabbath day, the Lord's day. Now some have per perverted this to try to prove to people that Sunday, because Jesus arose on the third day, Sunday, and so they call it at the Lord's day. But Sunday is the day we're supposed to go back to work, the first day of the week. Nowhere does the Bible set Sunday apart. And Jesus said, if you want to do something in remembrance of me, have communion. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. He says, I heard another voice out of heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and receive not of her plagues. And we're close this morning now. I want you to think about something. Are you doing what God wants you to be doing? Or have you listened to some man? And he's told you, oh no, we don't do that no more. We're, we're the new modern day this, and we're the new modern that. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. Who's changing then? Are you ready to come to Jesus this morning? When you come to Jesus, you have to leave all your baggage behind because He says, I'm going to take care of you. When you get to heaven, you're going to have to stand on the outside for a moment and change your clothes. <laughs> you're going to have to be given a garment of white. That's why you watch these rapture movies you see on TV. All their clothes have been left behind. They're not all naked in heaven. They're clothed with righteousness. They put on a white garment. Clothing pure and white. Holy. And you're not going to get it. Unless you've been separated to God. And doing what God has said for you to do. Will you come to Jesus this morning? Or will you continue to live in your world thinking you're doing what God wants you to do, but are you? Are you doing what God wants you to do, or are you doing what you want to do? Make up your mind this morning. Am I going to do what God says, or am I going to continue in sin? Doing against God. Come to Jesus this morning. Thank you. Amen.